thank all of you for being here uh, for the opening of this project, this exhibit, and especially for honoring these four young people and their parents who had great courage on that day all those years ago. I want to start off with a poor, some poetry by one of our students at Calhoun Community College, Ms. Kyle Walton. Courage by Richard Baird. <clears throat> what does courage mean to me? What does it mean to you? To some, a single attribute. To others, quite a few. For courage is a lack of fear, inspired by faith and love. Love of a person, place, or thing. Faith in our Lord above. In time of stress, the Lord provides the strength to overcome. It's courage giving special drive until the goal is won. When danger threatens life or limb, it's courage to the fore. A courage known by many names as daring, guts, and more. Whatever name we give this trait is valiant, stout, and bold. In action, it is fortitude, a wonder to behold. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Kaya. <laughs> Laura? Good afternoon. I'm Laurel Best with the Huntsville Madison County Public Library, and I can't tell you how very pleased I am to see all of you here today. This is just <coughs> such a wonderful occasion, and, and we are just so thrilled to have everybody here this afternoon. And, and my plan was to recognize all of the officials, and I, I'm just overwhelmed by the, the, the turnout today. So, so please know that we thank you all for being here, uh, elected officials, unelected officials, uh, our special guests, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And, um, and thank you to Wayman Burke and Calhoun Community College. We value our partnership with them. and, and they are the ones who made this all possible, along with our, our very own uh, special archivist, uh, Susanna Lieberman, and I'm going to turn it over to Susanna at this point. Well, my name is Susanna Lieberman, and I'm the archivist here, and I just also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Marilyn uh, Beck for being here. She's the president of Calhoun, and they have just been so wonderful to uh, help us do this and thank you for coming today and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Wayman Burke. I'd like to introduce my boss and the president of Calhoun Community College, Dr. Marilyn Beck. Thank you very much Wayman and a very special welcome to the opening of the on the front lines of history exhibit, which you've probably already reviewed, commemorating the 50th anniversary of public school integration in the state of Alabama. At this time, I'd like to recognize some of our special guests, state board member Mary Scott Hunter, uh, Huntsville Mayor Tommy Battle, uh, Senator Arthur Orr, representing both himself and the governor. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Um, and Dr. Casey Wardinsky, Superintendent of Schools. I know he's, okay, over to our left. We are so pleased that each of you could be here today to help us recognize this very historic event. Please join me in welcoming some of our honored guests. Many thanks to Dr. Parker Griffith, Mrs. Dorothy Davidson, the Alabama Education Association represented by Beverly Sims, and the North Alabama Educators Credit Union for your generous sponsorship of the event today. We would also like to recognize and thank Calhoun History and Political Science uh, Professor, Dr. Wayman Burke. I think everyone in the Huntsville area knows Dr. Burke. If he's not in the classroom, he's on television or radio. So 
thank you, Wayman, for all the great work that you do. I also want to thank Dr. Glenda Mitchell, Ty Neveth, and Leo Vallely for their part in helping to organize this ceremony today and also the exhibit. Wayman, we also thank you so much for not only what you do for the Calhoun community, Calhoun College, but what you do for our community and our region. Uh, working very hard for lots of months to plan and to host an event such as this. I also need to thank Laurel Dest and Susanna Lieberman from the library because you also have played a really important role in the success of this, this event. And it is a success. Just look at the number of people who've turned out for the opening of this exhibit. Some of you here today will recall the historic event of September the 9th, 1963, when four Huntsville African Americans changed the course of Alabama's history by being admitted to and attending classes for the first time in Huntsville's public school system. Soon afterward, the Birmingham, Montgomery, and other Alabama schools followed Huntsville's leadership. We're here today to honor those courageous students. Sonny Herford the fourth. Sonny, are you is here. here? I saw him on TV this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so come up front. Ms. Pearson, Mr. Bruton, and Mr. Osman. David is here. David oh, David. <laughs> Thank you so much for paving the way for all of us. Again, thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoy the program. Please return to see the exhibit whenever you would like to be inspired. I would now like to turn the program back to Dr. Burke. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Beck. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I want to recognize my colleagues here at Calhoun Community College, but I'm going to do that after our public officials have had an opportunity to make their presentations because I know they have very busy schedules. But I do want to make a, a, a couple of presentations right here real quickly. The principal sponsor of this, uh, in addition to Alabama Education Association and Dorothy Davidson and the North Alabama Educators Credit Union, uh, is Dr. Parker Griffith. Parker, would you come up here please, sir? Congressman, Dr. Griffith uh, actually financed our last project, and <laughs> he's financing this project, and he's going to finance the next one. I don't know if he knows that yet or not, but would you say a couple of words, please, sir? Well, th thank you, Wayman, and thank everyone for being here. I think it's, uh, it's, it's fitting that, that this turnout is here. It's fitting that we are celebrating a success. The ideals and the goals of America are set so high that it takes us forever sometimes to reach them. But the young men and women who integrated 50 years ago breathed new life into Jefferson's words, all men are created equal. And I think here today, this was going on all over the United States. Bob, Bob Harrison is here, had the struggle in Arkansas. Mr. Thomas is here, the last surviving member of the Anniston bus burning. We went through a period of time and thank you for being here. We went through a period of time when we look back on it, we cannot even believe we were Americans. And so I think it's important that we're here to remember that if we don't continue the struggle, we can fall backward. And so thanks, thanks so much for being here. This was a privilege for me. Thank you. 
And I know Virginia is back there someplace, and Virginia, thank you for letting us use your husband and his money. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, Senator Arthur Orr. Senator Orr took what is perhaps the last important legal step in correcting a great wrong done decades ago called the Scottsboro case. It was, Dr. It was uh, uh, Senator Orr who sponsored the legislation not to pardon but to exonerate the Scottsboro Nine. And for that, I, th I think our whole state owes you a great debt and to Governor Bentley for signing that into legislation. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. We're gonna, we'll hear from him again in a minute. Um, and also, Ms. Laura McCauley. I know she was involved in that and an advocate, and I'd like to, we'll hear from Laura again as well. Laurie? Laura is also president of the Huntsville City Board of Education. And Laurie, we want to uh, give you this, and she's going to be speaking a little later as well. I told what I do is behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Okay, um, I'm going to thank my colleagues at the end, and because the real reason we're here, of course, are to honor these four young people and their families, and we have two of the students here today, and we're going to give them uh, speaking time along with any members of their family who wants to speak as well, and I know Dr. Herford will have something to say. <laughs> so we'll start with the presentations, and Mayor, we're honored to have our Mayor Mayor Tommy Battle here to recognize these young people. Mayor. Thank you. This is a, this is a day that really hits to your heart. These are these young people who I still call young because they're my age, they're my contemporaries, who went to school on a day when they took a step forward and that step forward was a step for equality. That was a very special day. 50 years ago, that step was made. I was seven years old at the time, living in Birmingham, and if anybody has never been through the Civil Rights Institute in Birmingham, you need to go. It teaches you some lessons of the past and lessons that we need to all remember. <coughs> Those lessons are that we all need to be equal, we all need to have equality, and the most important thing that we can remember today is when Sonny and David, when y'all started your steps 50 years ago, you started steps towards equality. And those were steps towards an equal Huntsville. Thank you for the efforts that you've done. I have some commendations here. They have a lot of whereases, and I'm not going to tell everybody all the whereases. I'm going to save you. But the commendations say thank you for the efforts that you made in making Huntsville an equal place. Thank you. Our state school board member, Mary Scott Hunter. Thank you. This is a really special day, and um, as your state school board representative, it's especially wonderful for me to be able to bring these greetings and to be able to bring these resolutions um, about this day. 50 years ago, I wasn't born yet. I was born in 1972. Um, but I want to thank you for what you did because you made it possible for all of us to be standing here all together, shoulder to shoulder. I recently read a book, and if you haven't read this book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, it's a great book, and it starts with a quote by Elie Wiesel, we must not see any person as an abstraction. Instead, we must see in every person a universe with its own secrets, with its own treasures, with its own sources of anguish, and with some measure of triumph. And that's the thing. What you all went through those days when you took that step, not just you, but your parents, your parents, my child, my children are nine, seven, and five, and I can only imagine what was going through the minds of your parents, too, as they took your hand and took you on that sidewalk and walked you into that school. Your stories, indeed all of our stories, are not abstractions. They're real stories with a, not just a measure of triumphs, but with packed down, running over triumph. And I want to thank you for all that you've done and what your parents did. Um, for us all to be triumphant here today. I have a couple of resolutions and <clears throat> I'm going to read one of them. And it was important to me that we include somebody very special, somebody's very special in these resolutions. Not only do they mention you, but they mention your school and they mention your parents. Um, the first one is for Mr. Mr. Hereford and Mr. 
Osmond, why don't y'all come on and come up? Stand beside me. Okay. All right. So the first one is for Sunny. Whereas Alabama public schools were integrated for the first time on September 9th, 1963, in Huntsville, Alabama. And whereas September 9th, 2013 marks the 50th anniversary of that historic event. And whereas Sonny Wellington Hereford IV became the first of four African American students to desegregate Alabama public schools on that day. And Sonny Wellington Hereford IV entered the first grade at Fifth Avenue Elementary School in Huntsville. And Sonny Wellington Her Herford IV was an exemplary student. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> at Fifth Avenue Elementary School. And Dr. Sonny Herford III and Mrs. Martha Herford showed great courage in their decision to enroll their son in school that historic day in pursuit of equal education and human rights. And whereas Birmingham, Montgomery, Mobile, and other public school systems began the process of public school integration, began the, public, the process of public school integration in the days that followed. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the State Superintendent of Education, Thomas R. Bice, and Alabama State Board of Education member, District 8, Mary Scott Hunter, do hereby express their appreciation to Sonny Wellington Herford IV for his courage to peacefully challenge the status quo and begin the process of equal protection of the law as it pertains to the education of children. Be it further resolved that this resolution is presented to Mr. Sonny Wellington Herford IV as evidence of appreciation for his role and his parents' role in this historic event for our state. Thank you. And this one reads the same, but I, I'm, I'm going to say that whereas um, the David Piggy Osmond uh, was an exemplary student at Terry Heights Elementary School. Exemplary? Yes, I think he, was. he was. Okay. Um, at Terry Heights Elementary School, um, whereas the late Reverend Cleveland Piggy and Mrs. Willie May Piggy showed great courage in their decision to enroll their son in school that historic day in pursuit of equal protection and human rights. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mary Scott. Stick around, guys. Uh, Senator Arthur Orr, would you like to say a few words, sir? I'll say very few because it, I think we have a lengthy agenda today. Uh, one of the things that uh, in sponsoring the Scottsboro Boys uh, resol Resolution and Act to exonerate those nine young men or eight young men, one of them had already been pardoned, was that we can't change history, but we can certainly change how we respond to history and what we do here in, in this age is in regard to history, historical facts that we can't change. And in that process, um, you know, when I think about the uh, integration of schools here, and I think about separate and unequal schools being such an injustice at the time. And I think of Dr. King's words about an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere, a threat to justice everywhere. And so that's something that you know I keep in mind, and I certainly believe it's true for us today to fight the injustices that we see in the world, much like they did it 50 years ago. Thank you for having me, and such a good day. And thank you for all you've done, Wayman. Thank you. I say, Laura McCauley and Dr. Wardensky, would you come forward, please? Good afternoon. Uh, I was joking with Dr. Herford, and I told him he was the first man who made me cry. Because he, <laughs> he, he delivered me in 1961. <laughs> And I was just, he just, he was a wonderful doctor, I guess, because I'm, I'm, I came out all right. <laughs> but Dr. Martin Luther King said in 1963, the measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. And Dr. Herford, you exemplary, exemplary of that quote. And in that arena, just in case the public hadn't heard about it, the Hospital City Board of Education last Thursday 
accepted a proposal to rename the University Place Terry Hikes new building when it's reopened to Sonny Hereford III Elementary School. Now, there has to be public input, so the PTA meetings will, uh, will be have hosting meetings. But on November the 7th, we'll bring it forth in a formal proposal. And I uh, hope the public supports this uh, nomination for Sonny Herford to have a school named after him. We know no better person right now. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here among friends and members of the Huntsville community. Uh, for what is a celebration? Uh, and a recommitment, I believe, uh, to the values that are deeply American, and that's uh, the values that are embodied in the 14th Amendment to our Constitution, the Equal Protection Clause. It says, before the eyes of God and before the eyes of our government, we are all created equal. Uh, and, and that's an important moment to take note of. Uh, this moment began uh, with a young man trying to enter Huntsville City Schools. Uh, today, our board president and our superintendent are committed to the actions taken on that day, which are to ensure every student gets an excellent education, that they do it together as a community just as we live as a community, and that we're going to have to continue to work because our work is not done to ensure every child gets a great education. And so it was my pleasure to work with uh, Ms. McCauley uh, to bring a new school to the Terry Heights community, and it'll be my pleasure when we put a plaque on it with Dr. Herford's name on it. Um, with that in mind, uh, I'd just like to take note for the children in the audience, since I am a school superintendent. Uh, you all have absolutions if you're supposed to be in school and you're not there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but for those uh, young ones and those who are still young at heart who always wondered, why do we study history? What is that all about? Uh, history is really about courage. History is about ordinary folks doing extraordinary things. <coughs> and even though it's recorded here in black and white, which means it's history, right? Because black and white apparently happens in history. Um, it's, it's really about courage, because these were ordinary people who decided that they had to challenge authority, they had to challenge the rule of the day to seek their rights, and thanks to their work, those of us today of any color, of any race, of any ethnicity are better for it. They brought greater equality to a community, and so when you're sitting in history class or you're looking at these photos and these stories, that's what history is about. It's about great people, Dr. Hereford, other great folks who have made our country what it is, and one day, you, who will make our country what it can be. Thank you. Doctor? I'm going to present you with a copy of Dr. Herford's book. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is excellent. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you so much, sir. Uh, let's see. Uh, Commissioner Harrison. Mr. Commissioner, Commissioner, could you say a few words, please, sir? Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayman. Um, I've known Wayman for the last 50 years, I guess. but. Uh, He's always doing great things for this community, so I commend him and the staff of Calhoun Community College uh, for their participation, Dr. Beck. Um, as I thought about what I was going to say today, I paused with a friend saying, be positive, Bob. As I look at this time of celebration and commemoration, it is also appropriate that it be a time of reflection for us to think about all of the sacrifices that were made for the desegregation of public schools. In Little Rock, Arkansas, where I'm from, we desegregated Central High School in 1957. At my age of 14 years old, scheduled to go there the next year, but they closed the schools. There were many of us who thought when I came here in, to Huntsville in 1968, five years after the desegregation of Huntsville City Schools, that we would be on an irreversible path. But as we reflect on the sacrifices that have been made, we must ask ourselves very seriously, what have we done? And more importantly, what is it that we're going to do? because we still have great major challenges in terms of equal education opportunity for our children. In Little Rock, Arkansas, Central High School today, all of the suffering that went on, the 101st Airborne being sent in by Dwight David Eisenhower, 
is 90% black today. Here we are in Huntsville, Alabama. Our schools, two systems primarily, one north, one south. So we must look upon this time, this moment, in a very analytical kind of way and ask ourselves very seriously, what is it that we have done, but more importantly, what is it that we're going to do in order to assure educational opportunity for our children? There are miles to go, Reverend Dr. Herford, before we sleep. And you and Martha, God knows I have been with you all these years and the sacrifices that you have made personally, your practice really being devastated as a result of your contribution that you've made. There are untold stories about the commitment and the sacrifices that have been made by many of those that have come through this ordeal. And so I say to you today, reflect, commemorate, but more importantly, reflect on what's been done and more importantly, what you individually and we collectively can do to make it better. Thank you. Very inspiring words, Commissioner. Very inspiring words. At this time, uh, I want to recognize my Calhoun family for their contributions to this, and I would like to ask Leah and Glenda and Ty and Gerald and Dr. Beck, would you come up here, and Alicia, and I think Donna is here, our new dean, and uh, I've got Wes over here. Who have I left out? Janet. 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 Come up here, Janet. Isaac, Isaac, come back here, I Isaac, <laughs> Ty, <laughs> there you go. We are Calhoun Community College and we serve the community. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to mention uh, one other person if I could, uh, and that is uh, Jack Ellis and all the hard work. I know he helped write the book for uh, Dr. Herford, Beside the Still Waters. If you don't have a copy, you should have one if you're a Huntsvillian. I also want to recognize some folks who aren't here, Beth Butler, Lana Powers, uh, Turi Griffin, who runs DreamWorks. I don't know if Terry, uh, uh, Turi made it here or not. Russ Russell, he took care of so much stuff for me this morning. And Sergio Alex Maciel, one of our graduates, I want to note, and I'm not sure if Sergio was here or not, but Thank you, Sergio, for all the hard work uh, that you've done as well. And now for the reason that we're here, and that is these four young people, and we have two of them here. And so I would like to invite David and Sonny to come up and give us some words of wisdom. And then we're going to ask family members uh, to come up and say anything they would like to say. Guys, come on up here. Thanks, Wagman, so much, and everyone else who has uh, helped to put this program together. Um, wonderful to see uh, so many friends and family members and supporters here today. Uh, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. Uh, this shows the power of Facebook, I think, uh, um, among other things. But I, I do uh, sincerely appreciate uh, the turn. A little louder. Oh, OK. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, the turnout that we have. I'll be very brief. The main thing that I want to say is uh, I appreciate that this is, this is to honor us. Uh, I had just turned six at the time I integrated the schools. I didn't, know, I didn't know the significance. I didn't appreciate the significance at that time the way that I do now. I didn't know how afraid I should have been. I, I didn't know enough about the world at that time. If I had been a little older, like high school or something like that, I would have been terrified, I'm sure. To, to do what I did back then. And I'm so grateful to my parents for protecting me from all of the ugliness that, that was out there at that time. And so I, I just want to make sure that, uh, again, even though this is for us, I want to make sure that we all appreciate the efforts of those who were a little older than I am, people like my parents and all of the other brave people who fought for this cause, all of the college students who knew they were going to get arrested just for trying to sit down in a restaurant, that sort of thing because those were the people who knew what was on the line completely and they did it anyway, okay? And then um, the last thing I wanna say is that I do think it's important to remember because um, 
as I heard a little while ago, there are some out there who would take us back. There are some out there who would take us in a, a backward direction. And they don't all wear white robes. Some of them wear black robes. And thank you very much. The governor, the senator, uh, the mayor, uh, the school board, uh, Calhoun with my alum. Uh, I just want to think, say you that you know, it's, it's a really a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited because I remember the first time when we did the market presentation, Wayman, is that uh, at the time that we actually talked about doing that marker presentation, I was wondering what the look of the crowd was going to be. And I will tell you the look of the crowd today is exactly what I would like the crowd to look like after all of the challenges that I think everyone has so eloquently expressed uh, that have happened over the many, many years. So I'm very excited to be here. And I think Wayman gave me a short lease in terms of time. So I'm not going to eat up a lot of time here. But I think that, Wayman, between you and I having a conversation back there, you, you must be a brother from another mother. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure there's some relationship. We have a lot of similarities in reference to how we were brought up. We talk about how the challenging me of the child, I think, uh, uh, I think Sonny said it so well. We didn't know. Uh, I, I expressed my, at, this, at an interview this morning that I walked across the threshold with my father at that young age, and I had these individuals that I guess were, at that time was law enforcement <coughs> running the side of the walk that was walking through. I thought it was a parade. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a parade. I, I understand it was a parade for one time, because every time I showed up the next time, I did, that parade wasn't there. But it was a great experience that I did have as a child. And I think as we look at 100 uh, miles to the south of us, that experience was a lot different. And we're in a different place. And I shared this morning through the interview to let them know that, you know, it was a different time. People had a different mindset. Uh, where today we have a new mindset. We're evolving, some of us are still evolving. Some of us haven't evolved yet. But I think as we said there, the commissioner said much earlier, you know, reflect. We must reflect and continue to move forward as we continue to reach back and help those that are younger than us, those who are there with us, those who don't know, who haven't had the journey. So we have a great opportunity. We also have a great responsibility. Because one thing I found out when this happened, and I didn't know all this going through high school and didn't figure this all out until after high school, I said, wow, I, I really got something on my shoulders now. It, it's, it's not all gra gravy and, and, and everything else. I mean, it's a lot of work to do. And it, you know, to keep up the good work, uh, no, to make sure you keep your character in, in check. Uh, there, there's a lot that, that Sonny and I uh, and others who are before us have when we talk about trying to continue this work and making sure that we uh, get set the right example. One thing I will say before leaving is, say, is that there was an experience I had in, in the elementary school days. I took up for a young boy. Did not know who that young boy was at the time. He was not African American, he was not black, but I took up for him. That because of what I was taught as a kid that you know, hurting others was, or bullying others was the wrong thing to do. And, and you have to be very careful with what you do, ladies and gentlemen. We have to be very careful with what we say. And that starts at home. What do you say to your spouse? What do you say to your kids? What do you say at the home base? Because what do you say reflects and impacts those things around you? So just remember, just be kind to one another as we move forward. If that, I can give you that much to say uh, in terms of, 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 of our humanness. Just be kind to one another. And I think that kindness will spread. It'll, it'll be just, it'll just, just as infectious uh, as, as, as all the work that we've done over the years. So thank you very much. Thank both of you. They, they, these guys were all adults now. We're all on first name basis. Uh, Sonny, I first met Sonny in 1974 as a new teacher at Butler High School, and I was SGA sponsor. That's what you give the new guy. And so Sonny was one of my kids. He was the president. And so I also later talked to his sisters and have become very close with the family over the years. Dr. Herford and Mrs. Martha Herford, would both of you come up here, please? I want to give thanks to the people who got this together. I told Dr. Burke last week, even before I knew about the school naming, that a lot of things have happened to me in the last 20 years, and he's been in the midst of all good things. <laughs> and so I told Russ Russell two days ago, and I want to tell Parker Griffith, Dr. Parker Griffith, and all of these people who put this together, you look at me as a man. 
not a black man. And so I really do appreciate that. Now, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Somebody asked me, why did you file that suit? Can you see this? Can you see this? If you can see a little red dot, that's Council High School. If you can see the shaded part, that's the city dump. That's the city dump. My school was in the midst of a city dump. It surrounded it on three sides like a horseshoe. I call it the horseshoe phenomenon. I wanted to be a physician. No library. No playground. No uh, restaurant. Uh, cafeteria. We did not have any chemistry lab. No biology lab. And no physics lab. That's the reason why I filed that suit. And so we were able to get to the place where we have schools with those things now. And so I say on my movie, I was optimistic about Huntsville in the beginning, and I'm still optimistic about Huntsville. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, Dr. Berg and all, I would like to thank you for coming out and making our day. And uh, Dr. Berg wants me to tell a story about when my son went to school and we had prayed and we felt like God would take care of us and he surely did that. And so we wanted things to be right for us, just like it was. If it was okay for this person, we felt it should be okay for us. And so it turned out that we are well on our way, but we still have a ways to go. I thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Ms. Erlene Dockery. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure this evening just to be here and to be part of this. I am mama number two. I was part of help raising David, and I hope I'm part of the one that helped stir him the way that he have gone today. I am so very proud of him, and uh, I'm so very proud of young Hereford also. I have known his father ever since I was a baby until I am now. My mom went to him, my whole family went to him as a doctor, that he was our physician at that time. But I'm not gonna say too much because I know the time is short. I would just like to say that what many others have said, continue to push, push forward because we have come a long ways, but we have a long way still to go. Thank you. Are there any other family members who would like to say anything? I thank all of you for your words and your courage at the time. I'm not sure I could have walked a small child to school that day, I will tell you. That's, that was very, very tough. Uh, you know, Arthur was talking about history and why we <coughs> teach history and so forth, and I always say it's a cultural experience. But you know, one of the things we have to do is to embrace the past, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm proud of my city as a native son of this community uh, for what it's done thus far in that regard. These people truly stood on the front lines of history, and they're largely unsung heroes. Uh, I would, before I close, I want to recognize my wife, Jan, because she didn't fuss at me for being <laughs> out late nights and working on weekends on this project. Thank you, Dave. And I want to close, and by the way, we're going to mill around here. You're going to have pictures taken with the family, and, and I ca keep calling you kids. I always think you're 17. I mean, my vision of all of my kids is they're all 17. Um, is, uh, I would like to ask Ms. Alice Sams, who is the president of the Huntsville-Madison County NAACP, to make some closing remarks. Alice? Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. It is an honor to be here. You know, last month was the 100th anniversary of the Martin Luther King March on Washington when he made his famous I Have a Dream speech. And there were so many things said in that speech that have not come to fruition today. Because right now in Huntsville, we are still under that desegregation suit that Dr. Hereford uh, initiated. That is too long. We need to all work together. We need to have the courage that these four young people and their families had in 1963. We need to work together in love and peace and in understanding that all children can learn. Everybody needs to have the same opportunity. It should not be a Northwest Huntsville and a Southeast Huntsville in the school system. We got to work together. The superintendent is trying very hard to gain unitary status here in the Huntsville City School System. We deserve it. We are, Huntsville has been known for number one in a lot of things. We need to be number one in education too. It's no reason. So they need our help. The kids need our help. I went to all segregated school. In 1963, I was a sophomore at Alabama a and University. I hadn't even seen too many white people because I grew up out in the county. We didn't come to town much. But I got a good education. And I think everybody here deserved the same thing. Not for yourselves. Most of you have already articulated to some higher form. <laughs> of education, but we have our kids and our grandkids and our community children. We should embrace each other, have that courage that the four young people and their family had on September 9th, 1963. Can we do it together? Yeah. Yes. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you for those inspiring words, Alice. We have, uh, I believe this gentleman was mentioned earlier, Mr. Hank Thomas, who was on the bus that was firebombed in 1961. And Mr. Thomas, let us know who you are because we'd like to come around and many of us would like to chat with you, I'm sure, and, and uh, learn from your experiences, sir. Would you raise your hand, sir? There, there he, this is the gentleman. The tall guy right there. Very good. Would you like to say a couple of words? Okay. I will say to you, as Elizabeth Taylor said to each of her eight husbands, I will not keep you long. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I received a phone call, and uh, as I'm relating my story of why I was here in Huntsville, and I see a few people that I helped get in trouble by getting them arrested, so I was the one who got them started on a career on a career path of criminality when we had the sit-ins here. While I was here, something terrible happened to me. Uh, I was the uh, victim of a chemical gas attack and uh, was some kind of a mustard gas, a very blistering agent. And the doctor who treated me, I did not remember his name. This is uh, 1962. So when I got this call and I related my story and certainly of what happened to me, I was told the name of the doctor. And so a couple of days later, the doctor called me. His name is Dr. Herford. And he said, I'm the one who treated you. And I said, you know, I never got an opportunity to thank you. And he told me about this particular event. So I told him I'd be happy to come. And so just earlier this morning, I got a chance to thank the doctor for his uh, treatment of me, and uh, he did a pretty good job of it, too. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Herford, for including me in this ceremony and to the city of Huntsville. Um, the fact that you remember your history and that you commemorate those brave individuals is indeed a commendable thing. Thank you very much.
thank all of you so much for coming out and uh, feel free to talk to these guys and their families and get your photograph made with them if you would like and thank all of you for coming out thanks for my Calhoun family and to all of our friends and well wishers thank you Russ, Russ. Yeah. Oh.